OK, so let's begin. Uh, so last time we talked about this notion of variable mutation. So if you recall, in the first two to three weeks, we were only using constants. So constants mean that once you've assigned a value to a variable, or to, you've given a name to a value, you can think of it that way, that relationship can never change. So if I say const name Ruben, it's a constant. I can never change that name to mean something else. If I want something else, I have to create another variable, say name two, and then assign that to something else, right? That's what we mean by a constant. It does not change. With uh, variables that are not constants, and we can declare a variable that is not a constant using let, right? So just as we could do const name value, we can now do let name value, right? And with a let, this means that the variable can actually change. So we can modify it moving forward. Now, here's the thing. Uh, if you are reading code, and let's say the code you're reading is not simple. It's not this much code, it's that much code, right? When you look at a variable, so you see a name, and you say, okay, this name has a value in it. It's a lot easier to think about your code or to try to understand what your code does if you know that that will not change. If you know that no matter where you are, no matter what cycle you're in or whatever, that variable is always going to be that. It's easier to think about it. However, the moment you introduce this idea of mutation where you can change the value of a variable, you introduce a problem of time. The value of the variable can change depending on time, depending on where you are in your code, which cycle you're in in your code, which recursive part of your code you're in, right? So now thinking about your code and trying to understand what it does and trying to fix bugs or add new features becomes much more complicated. Now, it's interesting to me that in general, when they teach programming, they don't begin with constants. They actually begin with regular variables that can change. What that means is that most programmers, right from the beginning, are trained to make variables that mutate. Right from the beginning. But this is a problem, right? Because we've just established that reading code and trying to understand code and debug code where the variables are always changing is harder than the situation where they do not. So, my plea to you, and what I hope you will take away from this class, or one of the things, is that whenever you structure your programs, whenever you write your code, you will begin by creating constants. Always, whenever you want to make a variable, think of making it a constant. Only make it a mutable variable, that is to say, use let or not a constant, only when you're absolutely sure that it makes sense in that context. The default in your mind should always be constants no mutation. The more mutation you have, the bigger problem it is. There's a second issue. Suppose you don't actually change a variable. So you do var or let, so let's say you use let, and you make a variable, but you never change it. The fact that you did not make it a constant means that whoever reads your code cannot trust that variable to never change, right? When you say it's a const, you are making a promise. You're saying, I guarantee you this variable is not going to change. And so reading the code, you're sure that that variable is always going to have that value. No problem. The moment you make it a let, even if you're not going to modify it, the user still has to read through the code and understand that you did not actually modify it. You see the problem? So whenever you declare variables, always, the first thing, try to make them constants. Only if it doesn't make sense in the context that you're doing or it complex your algorithm or whatever, then yeah, maybe you can use a let. But first, always try to default to a const. Did that make sense? Good. Okay. So, let's look at some code. So as I mentioned before, we create variables ones that can change, that is, using let, right? So we do let a, a being the name, equals some value, like hi. Okay, so now a has a value of hi in it. But now I can do a2. a now has changed and now has a value of 2 in it. I can do a true. It has now changed and now has a value of true, right? 
Again, the problem is, is that if you look at really long code, and there is lots of code here, lots of code, and then there is lots of code, and the variable keeps modifying over time, this can cause bugs, right? This can cause issues. It's harder to understand code that looks like this. Okay. The other thing that we talked about yesterday is that if it's numeric, we can do something like a is equal to a plus one, right? Which is the same as doing a plus equals one, which is actually kind of the same as doing a plus plus or plus plus a. Again, note that there is a difference between this one and that one. Does anyone recall what that difference is? Ye yes. John, perfect, exactly, yes. So when you do A++, the value of that A in exactly that position has not changed yet. It's not until the second time that you refer to A that it will have the modified value. Whereas if you do plus plus A, it will first modify that A and then, so the value of that A in that context, in that specific place, will be the incremented value. And the incremented value, of course, just means plus one, right? Itself plus one. Very good. And we can demonstrate this, right? One way we can demonstrate this is by simply doing console.log. So if I do a plus two, well, that's two plus two, so that should be four. No problem, right? However, if I were to do, let me wrap these with parentheses and do plus plus, uh, notice that a in this specific expression still has the original value of two. Yes? Uh, no, I'll answer your question in one moment. Yes. What if this, for example, right, uh, a is equal to x plus three, and p is upper than that a. In that case, what will be the value of our a? If we, sorry, if we do, say that one more time. For example, right, let a equal to two, and after that, you write a is nothing with this one. Only a equals, for example, three. What oh. will be the value of, if you write console log a, what will be Oh, here. Like this? Oh, you mean this? No, you mean the other way around? Remember, this is not var, this is let. The rules are different. So, okay, okay, okay. I, I get what you're saying. Okay. Here's, let me, let me, I think I understand what you're saying. You're saying this. Const f. Imagine you're inside of another context. And in here, you do another let two. Is this what you meant? Now, this a is above this a? Yeah, okay. So now if we call this, right? This a, okay, okay, it's a, it's a valid question. Look, remember the rule. If we see a here, right? Do you remember what the rule is for resolving the variable? Do you do? What is it? Right, so you first look in your current context, in your current block. So that's the beginning, that's the end. Is there an A d created in that block? Yes or no? Where is it? That A. That means it takes that and puts it here. If that A was not there, if this line was not there, you're right, then it would go up and take that one. Okay? Cool. The same if it's No, if there's no function, you just take the last value of a. So if I do, if I do, sorry. Okay, I shouldn't assign the same value. Yeah, that. A has a value of three here, but then here I've modified it. It now has a value of two. That's it. Forget three. There's no more three. First line, there's a value of three. Next line, there's a value of two. That's it. A has two. Mm -hmm. It's the final line. Yes. Make sense? So if I write code here, 
Well, remember, the code executes top down. Makes sense, right? So the first one, A is three, so you print three, then print two. Okay. Is, is this clear? Any other questions regarding this? Yes? Okay, so with the, you, so you can't make two variables, a const and a let, with the same name. You get a collision. That's illegal. Same thing. You can't name the same thing the same thing, right? Obviously. Uh, okay, so quickly, the difference between let and var. Someone asked difference between let and var. Um, actually, you know what? Let me, once I, I'll go over for loops and loops, cycles. And there I will show you the difference between let and var. It will be much simpler to understand. So I'll explain to you let and var very soon. Um, no, no other questions so far? Keep going? Okay. All right. So if I do console.log of a here, notice that a has now been modified. It started off as 3. It here it was treated as a three. So it was three plus two, which is why we got a five. The next time I refer to a, however, I get the incremented value of four. Yes? Did we get the question about let difference of let? Let and var. No, I didn't. I'm going to come back to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, very quickly, it has to do with scoping. But what specifically, I'll tell you very soon. Um, other question, question, is this clear? Okay, however, if I move the plus plus to the left side, okay, now the increment, the plus one, happens before that expression is, is executed. So plus plus a happens first, a now takes on the incremented value of four, and then we do the rest, which is four plus two, which is why we get a six. Is that clear as well? Yes? Four pluses before a. I think that's a syntax error. No, that you can't do that. But you, I think what you can do is this. Uh, hang on, I think you can do one second. One second, you can. You might be able to do this. Nope, you can't. Sorry, never mind. <laughs> An experiment that failed. So yeah, no, you can't. Uh, other questions. You can, but then you don't do plus plus. So do you, if you want to increment by anything other than one, so if you have let a is one, right, then you can do a plus equals any number you want. So you can do five. Okay? You can also do multiply equals, right? Same thing as a equals a times so on. Good? Yes? Yes? Huh? Okay. <laughs> but is it, are you confused about anything? Okay, good. That's what matters. Um, questions so far? Yes? Good question. So it, it, there's no difference in, so in modifying it if af, you're always going to be using A after. Then there's no difference. In other words, if I just do this, look. Um, why is it doing that? Stop it. Okay. If I do uh, A++ plus plus here, here I'll print 2, right? If I do plus plus A here, here I'll print 2. Yeah, except for loop is not a function, but we'll get to that in one moment. But yes, you're right. In that case, there's no difference. Other questions? Okay, so let's keep going. So thus far, the only mechanism that we had to create a cycle in our code, that is to say to create a loop in our code, was to use recursion, right? And so if you recall, the way that worked is we had two parts to our recursive mechanism. We had the part of the code that stopped the recursion, the termination case. 
And then we had the part of the code that would create the recursion, right? This was the recursive case, right? Okay, so any recursive function generally has those two mechanisms, right? The part that stops it and the part that continues the cycle. Um, it turns out that you can do cycles uh, using other constructs. And so one of them is known as a while loop. So here's how this works. Um, so you create some variable, let's say i, and you put into it some value, say zero. You write the word while. While is a reserved word in the syntax of JavaScript, right? So you can't create a variable called while, right? It's part of the language. You say while, and you, say, and you specify the condition, the termination condition within that. Um, actually, the not termination condition. That is to say, as long as that is true or truthy, the cycle will happen. And what is the cycle? Well, the cycle is any code that you put inside of these two blocks, right? So if I, any code that I put between this and this will repeat as long as this expression here is truthy. Hello. Hi. Morning. Uh, is that clear? So notice how here I'm doing I++, right? What that means is that i is starting off as 0. Is i less than 10? No. Huh? Yes. You meant the opposite of what you said, yeah. So yeah, it is. It's less. So we print i. Now notice that when we print i++, we print the original i. Why? Because plus plus is on the right side. If we were to do this, ah, I just created an infinite loop. My browser froze. <laughs> Do you know why? Do you see why? Is i less than 10? Yes, print i. Is i less than 10? Yes, print i. Is i less than 10? Print i. OK, now I have to try to figure out how to unfreeze this. Hang on. OK, good. OK, we're back to a working environment. <laughs> That's good. OK, so you just saw what happens when you create an infinite loop, right? <laughs> Bad. Don't do that. OK, so yeah. So if I were to put, hang on, let me. So what I should have done is that. OK, good. So now I get 1 through 10. Simple, right? This is a really basic construct. You have a while which has a condition. As long as the condition is true, it will execute the code between this and that. It will come back, check, and keep doing this as long as this is true. That's it. Questions about the while loop? No questions. OK. So we have another construct in addition to the while loop called ta -da, a for loop. So a for loop basically, hang on, let me, there we go, allows you to put, bring together all the, everything that you need to create the cycle into one thing. So with the while loop, if you recall, if we go back, we had to create a separate variable up here, and then we had to do some condition here, and then we had to remember to increment somewhere inside of our loop, right? So that means we had to do parts of the loop in different places in our code. The top where we create the variable, upstairs where we specify the condition, and down at the bottom where we, where we change the variable so that the condition eventually fails. Yes? Simple. Good. Now, if we go to the for loop, here notice that all three parts are combined into one thing. We have the condition, the first condition, which is where we create the initial variables. These are the variables that we are going to, to increment uh, in order to eventually stop. We have our condition. That's the second part. The condition is the part that, if truthy, will continue and continue cycling through. If falsy, it will break out of the loop. The loop will end. If this is falsy, the loop will stop. That's the termination case. 
we then have the part of the code that modifies i. That's this part here. So that's i. Well, we modify i doing plus. Well, we could have done i plus plus. We could have done plus plus i. We could have done i plus equals 1, right? Not i, 1. Or we could do i equals i plus 1. All of these will yield the same result. Is that clear? So then all this is saying is loop. In fact, I won't tell you. One of you tell me. What does this do? What does that do? Tell me the whole thing. What's going to happen? Write a number from 1 to 10. 0 of 2, 9. That's right. So we begin with i, I is 0. As long as i is less than 10, is, is the first cycle, is 0 less than 10? Yes. Print. Boom. We modify it. Is, I less, is 1 less than 10? Yes. Print 1. Blah, 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 blah. The last one, we modify it to 10. Is 10 less than 10? No. We break out. Make sense? OK. So, so far, we know three ways to cycle. Yeah. Re recursion, while, and for. Right? OK. There is one more construct that is very rare. Yes? The mutation, this? No, you can't. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a fixed order where the first thing is the declaration, the second order is the checking, and the third one is the modification. You have to stick to that. And also notice that there's a semicolon between them. Notice the syntax. It's very important. Yes? So, okay, very good question. So why have two things that basically yield the same thing if we could have just done it with one thing? Good question. <laughs> um, so, okay, so, so far we've only been doing it with numbers, right? Where we've been incrementing numbers. One reason why you might want to use a while if you're not using a number, for example. Let's say you're, do, you're modifying text and you want to see if the text is, you know, whatever. And the text isn't simply just a, a quick increment. It might be very complicated code here that modifies that variable, right? So in that case, this wouldn't really make sense. So that's one potential reason. Fair? Other questions? Very good question. Very good question. No more. Okay. So the last one is known. Oh, eh? oh, I didn't do do while. Okay, I'll do do while. Are these really the only ones? Okay, I forgot. Okay, let's do it. So just as we have our while loop, we can do what's known as a do while loop. So the structure looks like this. You do do, you begin, you end, and then at the end you do while i is less than 10. Uh, hang on, let me, so here we do i++, plus plus. let's console.log i. Hmm? Hang on, Oop. okay. We format this, okay, good, that's it, okay. What does a do while do? <laughs> so here's what it does. Um, it always executes this code first, regardless of this condition. It's always going to execute this one time at the beginning, always. But then it will check to see if this condition is true or truthy. If it is, then it will go back and do it again. It will check. If it's truthy, go back, do it again. Got it? So regardless of what this is, it's always going to run this part at least one time. Got it? OK. Why? When would we ever use? Is that what you were gonna, going to ask? OK, let me, answer, uh, let me answer the why, and then I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question. OK, so when would you use something like this? So imagine you go to an ATM, like a bank ATM, right? And it asks you, like, what do you want to do? And then when you finish, you say, like, repeat or, or hit like, another transaction, right? And then the whole thing happens again. The first time, it's always going to offer you a path, right? It's not until you say, okay, I'm done, no more transactions, that it goes back to home, right? 
So the first time you want to execute all that code, you want to put in all your bank stuff or take out money or whatever you're doing, but then only if you had do it again should it happen again. Right? Okay, another example. Um, oh, I know. Uh, you write some sort of an application where you prompt someone for a question. You say, uh, if you want to know the addition of two numbers, put them in, I will give it to you, or hit Q. Okay? If they give you a number, you compute it, you run again. If they give you a number, you compute it, you run again. If they hit Q, you end. Right? Okay, that first time has to run, bef and then, then later you check, was it Q, and then you break. Did that make sense? Sort of? Don't worry if this stuff seems kind of not so obvious to you. Uh, once we start actually building much more complicated things, you'll start using this and it'll become much more clear why, why you would want to use this kind of stuff. But yes, do while is a very rare construct. It's very rarely used. Um, you had a question. I answered your Okay, good. Uh, yes? Do, as in a while within a while? No, no, no. What, that, what you just said, is a basic while loop. Just do while, start, end, done. There's no do. If you write while before the console log, what do you mean? Uh huh. You want a console log here? Where do you want it? Where, where, tell me where to put it. Ah, you mean here? Ah, oh, crap. What did I just do? Ah. Uh huh. Uh, uh, local host. So we want, what is this, lecture one, one, nope, we did that one, lecture, yeah, two, one, two, zero. There we go, variable mutation. Okay. So, okay. You, you want me to put console.log here of i? In which case I will get the last, oh, actually this is a very good, sorry, one second. Okay, fine, do while, like it matters. Okay, all right, fine. Um, do, okay, let's stick this in here. Let's just do I++ plus plus here. Uh, one second, one second, so it ends there and it ends there. Okay, you already see the answer. Okay, for those of you who maybe didn't see the answer because you're, I don't know, talking to a friend, um, what do you think gets printed at the bottom? <laughs> yeah, the people who said, then, why? Good question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> why? Why do you think? Uh, yeah, I good. Right, until? Exactly. So in order for this to fail, if we're starting off at zero, right, this condition will only fail when i is not less than 10. That means i has to become 10 for this to fail, right? That means here it's 10. Following that logic. No? Okay, look. Look, very simple. i has 0 in it, yes? i++. plus plus. 0 plus plus. Here, what is, what is it now? 1, good. Is 1 less than 10? I++. plus plus. Is 2 less than 10? Less than 10, less than 10, less than 10. When is it not less than 10? Right. So 9, fine. 10, eh, 10. Jokes? You took a deep breath. Okay, one more time. Look. I see these things. Okay. I is a box. You have a 0 in it, right? Here you do I++. Plus plus. What is the value of I now? 1. Good. Is this true? 
OK, so we do it again, right? So we come here, we execute i++ again. What's the value of i? OK, blah, blah, blah. Let's say we jump to 9. i++ is 9 less than 10. Yes, so we come here. Plus, plus, what is the value of i? Oh, why do we? No, we're not. OK. Remember that we're not writing practical programs right now. We're just learning the constructs. Why am I just randomly writing 0 through 9? I don't know. Just to show you that this is what it does. It's not practical. Very soon, we'll be writing like interesting code. But you have to know how it works so you can write the interesting code. Yes? Yeah. Very interesting question. Yeah, very good question. What do you think? Wait, wait, wait. So hang on. Let, let, me, let me show you what she said. So she's saying, if I do another variable, let b, where I do i++, what is the value of b? Zero. Zero. What do you think? Remember the rule. It's the same rule. At this case here, what is the value of i? It's not until the next time i is referred to that it has a value of, right? Jokes? OK, now how can I modify this in order to get the 1? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Huh? Ugh. Very good. Uh, other questions? Good, this is clear. OK, so very quickly, for those of you who know what var is, if you don't know what var is, you can go to sleep. For those of you who do know what var is, I want to try to explain the difference between var and let, just because I noticed that there is some confusion here. So the difference has to do with scope. Suppose I create a function. And in here, I make a for loop. Uh, let i, no, actually, you know what? Let me just, yeah. 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus. In here, I'm going to make a let b, which I'll assign, I don't know, i. And I'll console.log that. OK. So, wait, what? No, sorry, hang on. Ah, so I do let b is i. Good. OK. All right, now, look. I declared a variable inside of this block. Think of these curly braces as a block. So whenever I say block, think of <laughs> hmm? block. See this block? Inside of that block, I made a variable. There it is, right? Yes, everyone sees that I made, OK. Here, I refer to that variable. Eh, can't do that. Why? Because let creates variables that have block scope. That means they are only visible in the block in which they are created. It's created inside of this. I can only use it here. I cannot use it outside of the block. Va yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, const also, look, if I do const b, let me show you. Yeah, see, still error, nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not until I get rid of this. You haven't called the function. The console ah, crap, sorry. OK, so it does that. But then if I do, wait. Wait a minute, something's up. One sec, one sec, I'll figure this out. Ah, 
I use it too. Mirapa, mirapa, mirapa. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Yeah, see, B doesn't exist anymore. What the heck is it printing here? Uh, let me see what B is. Yeah, B is not available, and then it should give me an error. Oh, okay. It, oh, okay, okay, okay. No, I'm right. Don't worry. I'm right. Okay. Here's what's happening. Look, if I try to do console.log hello, it's not going to print it. See, there's no hello. Okay, here's what's happening. This works. So we get 0 through 9. When it comes here, error. So it stops, which is why we don't get hello. So I'm right. This is an error. You can't do this. Okay. So now let me explain what I just, what I'm talking about. Hi, Ali. <laughs> it's easy. Don't worry. All I'm saying is when you make a variable, when you declare a variable using let or const inside of a block, you can only use it inside of that block. Outside of it, you cannot use it anymore. It does, it's not created. It doesn't exist. Does that make sense? Okay, this is the part where those who don't know var, la 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 la, okay? Here's, however, if I did var here, this is okay. See? It prints 9, it prints hello. No problem. The reason for this is because var has functional scope. Functional scope means it's, it exists in the entire function in which it is created. So that means this is the same thing as doing this. You get it? If I use var inside of a loop, it does the same thing as this. This is known as hoisting. It takes this and brings it up and puts it there. If you don't know what var is, la la la, remember, you don't have to know this. But if you know var, this is the difference. Yes, sir. This one. Church, go. Yeah, go. Oh. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. Him, then you. Go. Back there, yes. To change a variable outside of the function? No. So remember, yeah, so this, everyone listen. Remember, if you can't find a variable, you can go up, right? And you can keep going up until you find it. You can never go down, ever. Okay? So if there's something that's deeper than you, you can't go down and get it. You can only go up. So that means from here or here, I can't reach here if I'm using let, right? The variable is only declared inside of here. If I make another function in here, I can't refer to the variables inside that function from out from this function. Yes? If it's outside, you can reach it because you're going up. Okay? Cool. Let also Yeah, yeah. So let, so forget all this garb. You know it. Yes, if it's let, all the rules that you know apply. You can always reach it going up. You can never go down. So that means if it's declared in this block, it can only be used in this block, not outside of it. For those of you who knew var, did you now, do you now understand the difference between var and let? Yeah? Who does not? Raise your hand if you do not. I'm okay. I can explain it again. No problem. Okay. Good. See? Yay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Let's write a for loop that prints stars. Well, actually, let's create a function that uses a for loop to print stars. And the number of stars that we print is determined by its argument. So if the argument is 10, it prints 10 stars. If it's 5, it prints 5 stars. Does anyone know how to do that? Yeah, of course you do. Anyone, anyone else? You know how to do it? Do you? Yeah. All right, let's go through it. Talk to me. What do I do? 
I love it. Notice how he, he right off the bat, constant. He knows the, it's not going to change. We're only going to have that one function in that variable. By default, he's using constant. He's not saying let. Beautiful. Awesome, dude. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. A, sure. Okay, so we'll call this f with, I don't know, let's say 10. Or i plus equals 1, or i uh, equals i plus 1. All the same thing, right? Okay, now what? Okay, so remember, so yeah, so the start of our loop are our block, the, the end of our block, and then we console.log, what? Star, beautiful. Ta-da! Ten stars. Let's make them two. Two stars. Let's make them 21. 21 stars. Yay! Is that clear? Okay, now let's console log star concatenated with i. But now, let's have i be only every increment by 2 rather than 1. Zero, two, four, six, blah, 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 blah. You guys see what we did? So that means that if I give it 20, how many? Good. Uh, awesome. Very nice. OK, OK, OK. Now, instead of console logging, let's return a string that has that many stars in it using a for loop. Someone else. You got it? I'm listening. Say again? Wait, wait. So I wanted to return. Hang on. OK, let me be clear what I want. Const uh, stars. Hang on. OK, I want this function to return a single string with the stars in it, yeah? OK, go. OK, remember, we're not doing recursion to do cycles here. We're using the for loop, yeah? And by the way, just very quickly, if I did do return i, what would this function return? Yeah, because what would happen is it would go here. It would say, is you know, i less than 20? Is 0 less than? Yeah, return 0. Done. Fin. Yeah? Yes, sir. OK, let's do let. No, no, no vars. Let. Let be, yeah. And then in for loop, nothing. Nothing? OK, let's try that. OK. Very nice. Done? And then after four, we make return, uh, return B. Yeah. Very nice. Ta da! Yeah. <laughs> uh, B equals uh, empty, empty string. There you go. Very nice. Does anyone understand this? Look, the value of B is undefined here, right? So the first time we do B plus star, we're concatenating undefined, which when it turns into a string, stringified, it return, it's undefined. So the, the stringified of undefined is the word undefined star, which is why you get undefined star. And then from then on, we keep adding star, 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 so we get undefined with 10 stars after it. Here, let me do i plus 1 here just to simplify things. OK. Um, so instead, what we do is we initialize it with empty text. So what this means is that the first time we concatenate, we concatenate empty text with a star. So we get a star. 
Then we concatenate that first star and we get two. Then three, four, five, etc., until we get ten. Is that clear? Yes. No, I heard a no <laughs> quietly. Okay, good. If it's not clear, what do we do? John. Oh, sorry. Okay. Hang on, let me make this big. Grr. Enough. That's as big as it goes. Is that big enough? Can you guys see the code? People in the back, yeah, you can see it? Awesome. Okay, look, let's step through this. I want to go to the next step. What do I click on? This, right? Selaka, yeah. Then, okay, now we, I want to go into that function. Look, there is a function call here, right? I want to go in there and see what's happening. How do I go in there? Ah, very good. The down arrow, right? So now I go in, into it. Notice that this 10 went into this A. Good. We then create a variable called B. We put into it an empty string, right? We then begin our cycle. So now, A has a value of 10, I has a value of 0 in this block, right? We do B plus, what is B? Well, B is empty text, so B empty text plus star gives me star. Good. So let's cycle through. So now B has star. See that? We go again. B now has star star. I is now 1. 1 is less than 10. Good. So we keep going. Oh, sorry. Then it increments. It becomes 2. Blah, blah, blah. And we keep doing this. We keep doing this until eventually we return that text. And then we print. So stars now has the stars. And we print. Voila. Is that clear? Any questions so far? OK. So uh, time for a quick lecture. OK, so listen. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Very good question. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that. That's a great question. So listen, what's the difference? You tell me, OK? Just think about it. Between const, which stands for constant, or let, which is not a constant, huh? Can't be, Can't be changed. Good. Can you show me, is there any part of this code where we change what is inside of B? Therefore? Jokes? There you go. Very good. Yes? Yeah? We get not just star, but a space between. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. So what he's saying is here we could have just done like space star. And then we would have gotten spaces between these stars. We could have done, you know, smileeks. And now we get smileeks with stars, right? Etc. Yes? Very good. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, other questions? No questions. OK, so listen, guys. If you're even slightly confused about any of the material that we've covered, it's a good idea to try to come to office hours or ask questions in class. Because everything that we do builds on itself. OK? Uh, I remember when I was a student, I, OK, quick short story. Uh, I was in chem chemistry. I went to chemistry class. And the teacher opened up the, the, you know, the Mendeleev table, the table of elements. And, and it was two pages like this, right? And she went, for tomorrow, I want you to memorize this. OK, the book opens like this. And she went, I want you to memorize this. And I went, OK, so what do you think I did? Yeah, I memorized exactly everything to the left of the, of the center. 
right? Everything that was on this page here. And then I came in the, and she said, oh, the next day we're going to have a test. So I said, oh, pff, I got this. You know, I stayed up, I practiced, I, I knew I had this down. No problem. I went to class and sure enough, it's, it, she, no, everything. I'm like, but, you, but your hand did not complete the page. So I get the exam and sure enough, I knew a little bit more than half because some of them are kind of intuitive, but many of them are not, right? Many of them are weird. So I didn't do well. And then right that day, she began writing equations on the board. And I didn't know what half of those things stood for. And so right off the bat, I, I didn't understand that. And by the time I tried to catch up to there, she had already gone to the next step. And in fact, I barely ever caught up. This is why I, I'm, I'm horrible at chemistry, even now, right? So my entire career as in like chemistry was completely destroyed by that one day of her showing half the page. Now you are a programmer. Now I'm a programmer. But chemistry matters, I'm telling you. It's, if you know chemistry and you're a programmer, it's a good thing. The more other things you know, the better programmer you become. Why? Because again, you're solving problems in other domains, right? Now I can't work with people who do chemistry. Well, I do, but I, I pretend to know. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so my point is this. Things are going to build on themselves here, right? And if you miss even a few of the basics, everything else is going to collapse, right? So if any of this, any of this is not absolutely clear, talk to me. Okay, having said that, uh, this is going to be the last day when we are like knee deep in JavaScript, okay? We're gonna start talking about other concepts and use JavaScript to do programming assignments. So we're done learning, we're gonna start doing. <laughs> yeah, yay, yeah. So we're gonna learn all kinds of really cool stuff. We're gonna learn things about the web. We're gonna start using Node.js to do server-side stuff. We're gonna use, we're gonna learn a bit of jQuery to do DOM manipulation, that is to say modify the stuff in your HTML. We're gonna put it all together. We're gonna to talk about databases. We're gonna talk about cryptography. We're gonna talk about security. And all of these things that we are going to talk about are going to have programming assignments associated with it. One of the biggest things that I, want, that I want you guys to do is write a lot of code. The more code you write, the better you will be. Struggle through it, oh, it doesn't work, there are syntax errors, all of these things are okay. They will help you learn. They will help you become better programmers. So, before the end of today, I want you to feel relatively confident with JavaScript. We have 20, 20 minutes. 25? 15. 15. Clocks are, I'll go with my time. Let's say it says 2.30 on, on my iPhone. 2.45? Oh, I thought it was 2.50. All this time I'm keeping you an extra five minutes. You don't mind. Wait, so I don't I don't mind either. Um, so in this block, let's go through some exercises, right? So. Um, are, there, are there any concepts, specific concepts that you want me to talk about or just give you sort of general things and we just, yes? Huh? Reverse. You want me to talk about reversing? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, we'll, we'll work through a reverse function. Very good. Anything else? Other ideas? Okay, I was actually going to give you that for, as a homework assignment to write a reverse function. Uh, what? Oh, it's in the slides? Okay, it's in the slides. <laughs> then I'm not going to. Okay. Um, no problem. Was it a recursive function? It was recursive, right? Okay, no problem. Okay, so imagine this. I want to give you some text. Okay? So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What I want to do is create a function that will rev give me back another text that is the reversal of that one. That is the opposite of that one. In other words, if I give you ABC, I want you to give me C, C -A -B, C -B -A. C -B -A. One, two, three, instead, three, two, one. You guys understand the problem? Okay, so what is the input to this problem? Right, so it's the text, right? A string, let's just, let's reverse a string. 
OK, so let's create a function, uh, reverse, reverse, which takes a string, a, let's say. And let's have reverse, let's test it with, say, a, b, c, d. OK. So now, in here, we want to reverse it. Now, let's try to do this only using constants and only doing, bless you, only using recursion, right? What do you think? Oh, there's one thing you should know. So a string has a method or a function on it called substr. So a has a, a has a substring, which gives the starting point, the starting index, and how many you want to go. So what this will do is if a was a, b, c, d, 0, 1 would return a. In fact, let me show you that first. Hang on. Oh, man, being sick is not good. OK, uh, const b, c, console.log, b.substring, 1, 0. Oh, sorry, 0, 1. See how it gives me a? How do you think can I get c? What is the index of C? This is zero. That's one. Two. Good. And after that, how many do I want? Just one, right? Just that. Wait, what? Hang on. One second, one second. Substring, zero, one. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. My mistake. It's not the offset. It's the index up to which we're taking the value. So what this is saying is start from one and go until two, but not inclusively. Not inclusively means do not include 2. So exclusively. If I want to include C, I do, there you go, B, C. Got it? Does that sort of make sense? So for this, in order to do the assignment that I just mentioned, all you need to know is just do 1 and 1 more than that, so 2. So if I want to get A, what do I do? 0, 1. So I, I want this one, and I want up until 1. So not including B, so that's just A, right? If I wanted A, B. If I wanted A, B, C. If I wanted B, C. If I wanted just B. OK, so now you understand how from a string I can get just a part of it, yes? Yeah. OK, now that we know this, let's implement our function. Const f, uh, let's call it reverse. Let's print that, console.log. OK. So. If I, if I return A, it will print A, B, C, A, B, C, D, right? It just prints A, which is that. Fine. What we want to do, though, is we want to cycle through and keep changing and reversing. In other words, what we want to do is take the last character of the string and return it at the beginning, right? Another way to think about it is the opposite. You want to take the first character and return it at the end. Any ideas? Size of? Well, tell me what to write. Does anyone have any idea? Yeah? Can you get what? Yeah, a dot length. But how does that help you? Uh huh. Yeah. 
Uh huh. Okay, so, right, 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 very good. Okay, so here's what he's saying. Look, he's saying this. You have some text, A, B, C. You want to have some sort of a reference to an index that keeps moving along, and you can compare this index to the entire length of the, of the string. And if the index eventually reaches the length of the string, you know you're done. So what you can do then is, given the string, you can take the first index, actually you can take the last index, you can do it that way, so that would be length minus one, so that would give you two, and you can return that, plus the recursive call, which will then return that one, that would be B, recursive call, which would return that one, which would be A. So you would concatenate C, B, and A, and get the reverse. Right? Okay, so what that means is that we, it's not enough to just get text, we also need an index, right? We need another argument. Okay, so what can we do? Maybe it would be easier to find the length of the string. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the question is, that easy part that you said, just, re just reverse it? That, that's the hard part. Yeah? Yes? Very good. So where do you store that variable, the length variable? So what do you think? So what you're saying is that to compute what you're saying, you need not just a string, but one more argument, right? So why don't we create a function that takes two arguments? So let's, take, let's create a function, const uh, re, uh, reverse helper, that takes the string and the, the, the length, or the index, or the increment, or whatever you want to call it. OK, now that we have both, what can we do? So let's say from here I'm going to return rev, reverse Rever ah, this reverse helper with a and the si what you say the, the size of the length okay a dot length okay now i is the length now what okay just we will Take some uh, letter from the end and yep. uh, put again, again A, and in the end we will uh, cut the, the first letters of A. Okay, but does that mean you have to modify A? Yeah, but it's work. <laughs> okay, let's let's assume we're not mutating values. If an A model is smaller than zero, terminate. Ah, thank you. Merci. Okay, what is the termination case? I is what? Smaller than zero. So less than, less than zero? Okay, in all other cases? Not bad. DCBA, very good. So, uh, but here's one thing though. Let's, let's debug through this so that those who don't understand what just happened can understand what just happened. Let me put a debugger here. Okay, look. We create a function, great. We create another function, great. We call the reverse with a, b, c, d. We then do a dot length. a dot length is four, right? So this is going to be four, and this is going to be the text. So let's go in. So the first time, a is a, b, c, d, and i is four. 
Yes? Okay. Is i less than 0? No. no, because it's 4. Good. So let's keep going. So when we do a dot substring of i and i plus 1, what does that return? No. Why do you think it returns an empty string? Uh, i equals 4. That's right. It's 4. Right, it starts from zero. So the last index is three, not four. So we're, we're, we're overshooting. Look, we have A, B, C, D, right? What is the index of D? Three. Right, because it's zero, one, two, three, right? So what we're trying to do in the first cycle is try to take the index of four, that's this, plus one, which is five. So starting here and going here. There's nothing here. Very good. So we can correct that by here doing a dot length minus 1. That will give us 3, so that the first time i now has 3. Let's debug again. Right? Ah, yes. Good. Okay. Now i has 3, right? So the first thing we're going to do is this. Let me put this on the board. If you can't read it, let me know. Don't wait until I'm done. OK. We called reverse help. Let's call it RV here, just so I don't write as much. We called it with text. What was in the first text that we passed it? A, B, C, D. And what was the argument? What is the length of this? 4. And then we did minus 1, right? This is going to return a dot substring i, a, that's this, dot substring i, which is 3, plus 1, that's 4. So that's going to give me what? What is a dot substring 3, 4? D. D, this one. So it's returning D plus, and then it's calling helper again here. See? Reverse help. So it's calling RV again, passing to it A. What's A? It doesn't change, right. A, B, C, D. What is the second argument we're passing? So if I is 3, I minus 1 must be 2. Then we go in again. Is I? That's i. Is i less than 0? No. So we skip that condition. a, which is this, substring 2 and 2 plus 1. What, where is the index of 2? It's this, right? So if that's 0, that's 1, that's 2, that's 3. So it's that index plus 1, which is here, so it returns just C. So we return C plus, and then we call reverse helper again, RV. Passing it A again, A, B, C, D. And then I minus 1. What's I? It's 2. So minus 1 is 1. Here we do substring 1 and 2. What is substring 1, 2 for this? Remember, 0, 1, 2, 3. Substring 1, 2 means taking B. Right? Yes? OK. So we return B. And then we call plus RV again with A, which is A, B, C, D. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then in here, is 0 less than 0? No. So we go here. So we take 0 index of A, B, C, D. A, right. So this returns A plus, again we recurse, R, V, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, which is? 
M minus one. Negative one, right? Zero minus one, negative one. So then we go, is negative one less than zero? We return an empty string. So this returns, re return, empty string. Now let's just roll it back up. What does this function return? Empty string. So all of, uh, sorry, all of this plus empty string, right? What does this function return? A plus empty string, which is A, right? This returns B plus A, which is BA, right? So this call returns BA, right? This returns B plus A, yes? Hopefully, okay. C plus B A returns C B A. Okay, so that means all of this returns C B A, right? D plus C B A returns D C B A. Therefore, calling A, B, C, D with a 3 will return D, C, B, A. Done. Thank you, thank you. You're too kind. And it is 250. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Out circle of Karen. Nice. All right. Thank you so much. Great job.